As I've been preparing for this up and coming Song of Solomon series, I actually came across some videos that I made way back in 2019 before I'd even started this YouTube channel that covers very similar stuff to things that we're going to be talking about in the series. And so what I figured I'd do is I'm actually just sharing those videos with y'all, not because they're anything mind blowing, but just because they're kind of fun callbacks that allow me the opportunity to see how I've changed my methods of communication and stuff like that in the years since. And so I think this will be a fun little thing. This is the final video that I do have from this series, and it only covers the third verse of the entire book and it is talking about the differences between physical attraction and spiritual attraction and yeah you know what I'm not going to talk anymore past David I'm handing it over to you here's the reality anybody can get a date and anybody can get married Especially with the rise in social media and the increase in communication, the dating pool has increased a millionfold in the last few decades, and finding somebody really isn't that hard. If you're 18 years or older, if you're desperate enough and you lower your standards enough, you can be married by the end of tonight if you want. So no, finding somebody really isn't that hard. The question we need to be asking ourselves is how do we find the right someone, and how do we find them the right way? That's the question we're going to be talking about today. Last week we were introduced to the young couple at the heart of the Song of Solomon, and the song opened up with the woman boldly declaring to her beloved, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is more delightful than wine. We discussed different qualities of biblical love that could be drawn out of that verse alone, and we ended that video with the lingering question, what exactly did this guy do to make her respond in this way? The resultant question might be this. What quality should I be looking for in another person to help me decide whether or not I want to spend the rest of my life with them? What quality should I be looking for in another person that lets me know whether or not God wants me to spend the rest of my life with them? That's where we left off in the last video, and we're going to pick up right where we left off. What on earth did this shepherd boy do to make this girl so crazy about him? Well, she tells us in the next verse. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3 reads, Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your name is oil poured out, therefore virgins love you. She looks at this guy before her and notices two things. He smells nice, and he's got a good reputation. When she thinks about this guy, the two things that make her desire him so desperately is that one, he knows how to take care of himself, and two, he's a good godly guy. And so to you guys out there, if you want to attract the right kind of girl, you need to become well acquainted with two things, your deodorant and your Bible. Don't be sloppy with your hygiene and don't be sloppy in your walk with God. If you can take care of those two things, you'll be a million steps ahead of 99.9% .9 of guys out there. However, if things were that easy, then we could close the book only three verses in and we'd be good to go, right? Sadly, it isn't quite so simple. It actually goes a little bit deeper than that. And what I think we have at play here are what we can call the two tiers of attraction. We have good chemistry and godly character. Or to put it more simply, we have physical attraction and we have spiritual attraction. The first thing that she mentions about this guy is that his anointing oils are fragrant. This falls into the category of what we're going to call tier number one, physical attraction or good chemistry. Back in Solomon's day, men didn't bathe very often. That's something that we take for granted a lot nowadays, but about 3,000 years ago, not nearly as common. They didn't exactly have showers or anything. Despite this, however, this woman looks at her shepherd boy and she can't help but notice that he smells pretty good. It was custom that since they didn't bathe very much, a lot of the times guys would use scented oils or ointments on their bodies uh, to keep their skin from drying out in the warm desert climate, but also to give a pleasing fragrance to their bodies, kind of like a cologne. So this guy is out all day and all night working with these nasty, smelly sheep and getting all nasty and sweaty and smelly himself in the Middle Eastern heat. But whenever he's around her, he makes sure that he's presentable and that he smells nice. And I think this leads us to some important questions we should ask ourselves if we find ourselves interested in somebody. First off, do they take care of themselves? And secondly, more importantly, uh, and more basically, do you like being around them? Because if they don't know how to take care of themselves, how can you expect them to take care of you in a relationship? And second off, if you don't like being around them, why would you want to pursue a relationship at all? You see, the physical attraction that the woman's describing here isn't centered on things that the man can't control, right? She's not talking about his eye color or his long locks of hair. Um, we actually don't even get a description of his physical appearance until chapter 5. Instead, she takes notice of the way that he presents himself, 
right? He cleans himself up and he tries to smell nice. He's wanting to show her that he values her and he wants to impress her and that he doesn't want to repulse her. But more than that, whenever she's in his presence, she finds herself physically drawn to him. She says that his anointing oils are fragrant. There's something about him, even beyond his personal hygiene, that leaves her wanting to spend more time with him whenever she's around him. She's drawn to him and she wants to spend more and more time with him. So ladies, does the guy you're talking to take care of himself? Do you enjoy being with him? Guys, the same question applies to you. If you want to pursue this person, you need to actually desire to be around them. However, from a biblical perspective, physical attraction is really of very little importance uh, when it comes to why we love someone. That might come as a shock, especially considering how much emphasis we place on physical attraction nowadays. It seems like most of our relationships revolve around physical attraction, and that's why we struggle so much with lust. Uh, but there's actually something much more significant uh, and of greater value that the Bible emphasizes. And that brings us to our second tier of attraction, which is spiritual attraction or godly character. In this verse alone, the woman mentions two things about this guy that go beyond her mere physical attraction to him. She mentions that his name is oil poured out and all the virgins love him. Studies have shown that smell is the sense that is most closely tied to your memory. And whenever you smell something, it draws a response from you. If it smells really nice, it draws you in and you want to get closer. But if it smells bad, you recoil and you want to get as far away as possible. And speaking someone's name is a lot like smell. Whether you realize it or not, there's a smell associated with your name. Whenever your name is spoken amidst a group of people, everyone who knows you will have some sort of response to that name. Either they'll be drawn to it or they'll recoil, depending on the type of person you are. And as this woman thinks about her man, she says that his name is like oil poured out. Sure, his physical appearance was like fragrant oil, but when it comes to his name, it's like a perfume bottle being opened up and poured out throughout the entire room. The response is so overwhelmingly positive that she can't help but be drawn to who he is. Your name represents your character, and when this man's name is spoken, he is seen as a man of virtue and integrity, all of which are a direct outpouring of his relationship with the Lord. This guy is known throughout his community as being a stand-up guy. When people talk about him, they can't come up with anything negative to say because he's so kind and loving and compassionate that his godly character outshines even his physical attractiveness. And so the question you need to ask yourself is this. When your name is spoken, how will people respond? Will they say, oh, David, what a God-fearing man. He really loves God and really cares for people. Or will they say, oh, David, that guy. If you're trying to pursue somebody, what is the perfume of their name? Whenever you assess their character, are they godly? Are they constantly talking bad about others? Are they living lives of sin? Are they faithful to their friends? These are all questions that you need to ask yourself because the name is the thing that should draw one Christian to another. Unlike modern love songs, which lust after the curve of a person's body, this song opens up with the woman saying that this man's love is better than wine because his name and his character are sweeter than the sweetest of perfumes. When she thinks of him, she can't help but think of how godly a guy he is. He's gentle, he's kind, he's holy. It's been said that character is who you are when nobody's looking, or that character is what you would do if you were confident that nobody would find out. Yet this woman examines this guy's character and it overwhelms her, it intoxicates her like a perfume being poured out into a room. He's the real deal. Even if he hadn't been doused in those fragrant oils, his character is of such sweet odor that she would be drawn to him nonetheless. And that brings us to an important truth that we need to remember. Our physical attraction should always be held in check by the spiritual attraction we share with the person to whom we are attracted. Physical attraction is a good thing, but it's temporal in nature, and it's only outwardly important. Spiritual attraction, on the other thing, is an eternal thing, and it's of internal importance. Therefore, it's way more important than whatever physical attraction we may feel. Our culture nowadays places a heavy, heavy emphasis on the physical aspect of relationships. You can go online and you can find your match by simply looking at a few pictures and reading a catchy one-liner. But according to the Bible, relationships were meant to be so much more than just physical. If you're working your way towards marriage, which is the end goal of dating, you don't want to simply settle for somebody who had a beautiful picture or a catchy one-liner. No, you want to find somebody who's pursuing God, who's patient and kind, who isn't envious, who doesn't boast, who doesn't keep record of wrongs. Ladies, that guy might have six-pack abs and a smile to die for, but can he care for you? Can he be faithful to you? Guys, that girl may be way out of your league and she might have just stepped off the runway, but is she pursuing God? 
or is she stuck up? Is she vain? This woman looks at her shepherd boy, and not only does she say that his name is like perfume poured out, but she says that all the virgins love him. She isn't the only one who's noticed this guy. All the girls want him, and all the girls want to be with him. Whenever she's around her godly friends, friends that she trusts and friends that give her wise counsel, even they see this guy and they think he's a lucky catch. And so another question you should ask yourself is, what do your friends think about the person that you're interested in? Are they all telling you that he's a bad guy for you? Well, then I hate to break it to you, but he probably is. Or are all of your godly friends telling you that this is a great guy that you should pursue? Because if so, then you're probably on the right path. And now don't get me wrong, if you're with the wrong friends, they'll support you in whatever you want to do because they don't really care about you. But what about the friends who do care about you? What do they think? The woman's friends in this song see this man and they can see that there's something special about him and that makes her love him all the more. Not only does he have all the qualities that are appealing to her eyes, but he has all the qualities that are appealing to God's eyes. That's the type of person that you want to pursue. So if you want to know the key to godly attraction, here it is. The woman was physically attracted to her man, yes, but his physical attractiveness was far surpassed by his godly character and his good reputation. Physical attraction is automatic, but spiritual attraction comes with time. You've got to get to know this person, and you've got to get to know some of their friends. The statement's true. If you want to be her lover, you got to get with her friends. But that's something you need to learn from this verse. The Bible does not endorse just jumping into relationships. Yes, that physical attraction might be automatic, but you do not want to pursue a romantic relationship with that person until you've come to know them a little bit more and you've come to know what type of person they truly are. When the Apostle Paul lists out the qualities of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the first quality that he lists is patience. So whenever you find yourself attracted to this person, don't jump into a relationship, but push the brakes a little bit and get to know this person truly. Get to know their friends. Over the next few weeks, we're going to continue this conversation on godly attraction. We're going to spend a little bit more time talking about godly physical attraction and good chemistry, and then we're going to spend a lot more time talking about good and godly character, what we're looking for when we talk about spiritual attraction. As for this video, I hope that it's been helpful to you, and I hope to see you soon. If it has been helpful, I hope that you'll like the video and subscribe to this channel, and that you'll click the little notification bell down there so that you know when a new video is up. Until then, keep a smile on your face, and don't let anybody steal your joy. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Alright, so yeah, um, once again, I think that video was pretty decent for um, what I was doing at the time, and I thought that it kind of served its purpose. There are some things that I'd probably change about the video, specifically just how I'm communicating things. I don't know if I really like the distinction of saying physical attraction and spiritual attraction, because I think that there might be a different way of communicating that, and I did communicate it differently throughout the video a few different times. Uh, I think that, because the word spiritual attraction might carry some baggage with it that I don't really intend for it to have. Uh, I'm more just talking about character, and that's what I'm going for. I'm more talking about maybe external attraction versus internal attraction. That's more what I'm trying to focus on there. Um, but other than that, I think that the video does a fairly good job. I think there's some things where I might be reading into the text a little bit more than I would encourage people to naturally do. I don't think that the way I do it is necessarily unfaithful to the text itself. I just think that, once again, and this is a similar criticism that I had from the previous video, I think that you can only make those logical jumps once you've understood the book as a whole. And so if I was using these as introduction videos to the book as a whole, I would, or if I was using these as introduction videos to people in the book of Song of Solomon, I would not feel comfortable doing this to the same degree nowadays without first giving them a big overview, big picture of the book. Uh, just because to me, whenever you teach the Bible, you're also teaching people how to read the Bible. And so I wouldn't feel comfortable going this in depth on any particular verse until I've also clarified that I'm only making these assertions and assumptions based off of what happens later on in the book. Because if you don't make that clarification, then some people might try to get this level of depth with each verse of the Bible without understanding how that verse plays into the book as a whole. And I just think that I would probably go about communicating it differently nowadays than I did back then. 
Uh, and that's fine, right? Like there's room for growth and I actually like doing that. That's why I wanted to share these videos because I thought they were fun to explore and I just like getting to see how I communicated back then versus how I do now. And still the content of the video I think is still really fun and I think that there's still some really good stuff there and I actually really like it. That's why I'm sharing these. I wouldn't share them unless I thought there was something worth sharing. Um, but to me, this was just kind of fun little exploration in uh, just my development over the course of these past few years. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, but other than that, uh, going forward, these videos are going to be videos from the present day where we are walking through the Song of Solomon. I hope you're excited. Until then, be sure to keep a smile on your face. Don't let anybody steal your joy. And I will see you all next time.